Welcome to this tutorial on creating an experience with Imperia's Creator Tools. The first thing I want to do is install the plugin. So let's copy Imperia Tool, go into plugins in our project and paste that in. And then if we load the project up, we can go to edit, plugins, type in Imperia, and we should see the Creator Tools pop up. We'll enable this and we'll now restart the project. The next thing we'll do is go to Window, Imperia Creator Tools. And the first time you log in, you will need to enter your email. And after you've done this, you will receive an email with a one-time code. That will allow you to progress through the next step. So now we've done this, we'll click Verify. And we've successfully logged in. So the first time you go on this, you'll have a little tutorial which goes over how to do each step. And it just makes it really clear to the user on how the flow for creating a scene should go. And in this tutorial as well, it's all functional. So everything in here does work as intended. So you can use the screen rather than the blueprints. The first thing I want to do is go over to place actors and we actually have Imperia tabs on here now. So if we go to the hotspot one, we can drag that in. And what a hotspot is, you can imagine this to be where the user is going to view the panorama from. And this also renders the panoramas. So wherever you have one of these hotspots, they will be where the user can click to move. It will be where the user can see from and so on and so forth. We can also duplicate these as many times as we want. So you can really pick where the user is able to move. So if you don't want them to be able to go in the woods, if there's no hotspots there, they wouldn't be able to do that. It's a good rule of thumb to always duplicate from the highest hotspot number. And this will ensure that the order of hotspots doesn't get interrupted. And as well as this, hotspot zero is always the start point for the tour. So that one is really important. The numbers of the rest don't really matter. It's just the order that they'll get rendered in. So if we just press gather points and recalculate as we've done, you should see that they are now in order zero, one, and two. And we do have the ability to rename these as well. So if you want to swap one and two, that's completely possible. So let's rename this one to three. And if we go back to our manager and gather points, you can now see three has been added. So the capture tool, you don't really need to mess around with this one. This is just how the panoramas get rendered. So the hotspots link to this, and that is how the rendering takes place. So if we just go into play mode now, we can see that we are currently on a hotspot now, and we can press Q to look around. So this is what the user will see from the panorama. And when we let go of Q, it will snap back to the original position. To go to the next panorama, you can press right on your arrow keys. And if you do press right a bit too much and you go past the hotspot you wanted, you can also press left to return to the previous one. And this just lets you see what the user can see before you do render. So now we are moving on to actually rendering out the panoramas. So we'll go to Window, Toolkit, and Render. It's important to put the level you're currently on into the Map section. And another important thing to note is the post-processing settings in the renderer here take priority over the one in the editor. So it's really important to copy your settings over from the one in the editor into the panorama rendering ones 
Otherwise, there will be discrepancies between the editor and the panoramas. And it's also important to note that you should have your exposure on manual. And this just ensures no artifacts are in your panoramas, such as uh, light bleeding and uh, grids on your panoramas. So we'll just match up our scene settings now, and that will ensure we are all good to go. The hotspot start range and end range is quite straightforward. So as the panoramas always start on zero, if we had five panoramas, we'd do zero and five. If we had three, we could do zero and three. Or if you just had one panorama you wanted to render, say zero, you could just do zero and zero. So we'll put our organization ID, experience name and scene name in now. And you, you have to imagine this as a web link. So Imperial would be first, we'd have a slash, then we'd have tutorial, slash and hotspots. So another important thing is path to set. So let's copy these now. And if we go to edit, project settings, and type in or scroll down to CLI encoder, we can paste these in to our executable path. And we can paste the second column into the command line format. And for video codec, let's put PNG. We'll put AAC for audio codec and PNG for output file extension. Now we we'll want to create experience and it will ask you if you want to delete previous panoramas. We'll press yes. And the rendering should begin. So as you can see, the, this is currently rendering each section of a panorama. And the when this is completed, it will stitch them together. This automated rendering process is a lot faster than using Ansel, as it's automated and it requires no user input once you've began rendering. So as you can see, we've now generated a link. And this is exactly where the panoramas we placed were. And if we want to move somewhere else, we can do that. So we can move to all of those hotspots we previously placed. The next tutorial is going to be over how to add UI to the experience. So currently we've got a scene we can just move around, but we want some interactive elements in here. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.